in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed any effort to save yourself outside of what Jesus has done on the cross is vain and is futile. This is doctrine from scripture. We are saved on account of the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ, which he did alone. His passion, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, his enthronement was entirely done alone. No human being sustains in himself the ability to save himself. The mere fact that we did not create ourselves means that we are unable to save ourselves. Is that true? Only the creator sustains that ability to help his creation. And Jesus came as a representation of the love of the Father. Please understand this. I've taught you this here. That the, one of the major reasons why Jesus came was as a representation of the love of the Father to man and then creation. He demonstrated the love of the Father through his substitutionary sacrifice, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. So the saving grace is the grace that helps you to hear and believe that gospel. If that grace is not upon you, you will not believe that report. You will hear it like many people hear it today and they harden their hearts and ignore it. They say, this is some Christian nonsense. But if that grace is upon you, then you are caught to the heart. That was the grace that came upon 3,000 men on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says they were caught to the heart and they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins and then you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children, those who are afar off, as many as the Lord will call, saving grace. But there is another dimension of grace called the enabling grace. This grace does not get things done for you. It empowers you so that even though the effort is being exerted by you, but it is not in the strength of the flesh. Are we together now? Watch this. A classic example of enabling grace is this mic I am holding. Who is doing the speaking? Who is doing the amplifying? Can I amplify my voice? But is this speaking? The potential of this mic is when I am in partnership with it speaking. The assignment is to make what I have released and amplify it beyond my effort. Are you getting the point now? This is the dimension of grace the body of Christ does not understand. And so here's what we do. God, your grace is able to lift me. God, your grace is able to bring destiny helper. And God is saying, this is not how it works. The labor of the fool weary at every one of them. The grace that enables. This is what Apostle Peter was teaching. So when he says, the God of all grace, the grace that saves and the grace that empowers. If I lay hands on someone who is on a wheelchair and the person gets up from that wheelchair, I do not have that power, but there is an engracing by the Spirit. Is that true? That person would not stand up just in his house like that. He had to come to the house of God. He had to release his faith. And the man of God had to minister to him. 
as you are sitting like this, God wants to touch you. God wants to bless you. But you will be surprised. Even though he wants to touch you, he will keep quiet. As though he cannot do it. But he ministers to me now and I say the power of God is touching you. You begin to see it happen. It is not just when I started speaking that he wanted to do it. He's always wanted to do it. But if you do not know how the enabling grace works, you will keep waiting forever. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So the Bible lets us know that it is all grace. 1 Peter 5 verse 10. Let's hurry up please. 1 Peter 5 verse 10. Let's read together. Let me show you what grace does when it is entire. Are we together? Ready? One, two, read. But the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he have suffered a while, number one, make you perfect. Number two, establish you. Number three, strengthen you. Number four, settle you. All grace. All grace. All grace. There is the grace that brings salvation. It is saving grace. But there is the grace that empowers the believer to walk in victory. For instance, the grace that comes upon your prayer life, granting you the capacity to pray and to be diligent in prayer. If you don't pray, even if the grace is on you, it will be unfruitful. Because the grace depends on your participatory contribution. Now, when you are praying, you are not neglecting what Christ has done. You are taking advantage of what he has done and you are making use of it. Are we together? Now, watch this, please. If you want to take tea, you bring your milk, you bring your whatever beverage you are going to use, sugar or honey, whatever it is now most of those beverages have been made already you don't need to make it is that true it's already there but who does the mixing as you mix it it becomes tea even if the tea was made for you you have to turn it into a cup and even if it's turned in a cup for you you have to pick it even if it's picked for you you have to put it in your mouth even if it's put in your mouth you have to swallow it there must be, if it must enter your system and profit you, there must be a participatory role. Now listen, the role that we play on account of what Christ has done to make good what is finished in our life now in experience is what the Bible calls faith. Faith, the name given to the participatory role. Without faith, the potential of God's grace can never be experienced. The second error I would say respectfully that I may want to, with every sense of respect, correct in the body of Christ is the idea that the only thing you do, because there are people who have agreed that you have something to do, but the only thing people say to do is to repeat what God has said. Just repeat what God has said and it is done. It's not entirely true. No. Speaking is a fundamental law of faith that releases the grace of God, but not the only thing. If all you do is to keep saying, I am blessed and I am lifted, I go from glory to glory, in truth you will not go down. Your speaking will allow the Holy Spirit come to honor what you have said. You have, you have said by showing you what else to do. Are you seeing now? There are many people who do not know what to do over their finances. They just declare, I will never be poor. You are not lying, but you will be very limited. There are people who doors have refused to open for them and they just say, all I know is that I'm not going to remain down. You are right. The Bible says the righteousness that is of faith speaks on this wise. But speaking is not the only thing. We didn't see Abraham speaking alone. The Bible tells us that Abraham is our portrait of how to maximize grace that comes from God through faith. Is that true? 
Isaiah 51, I think, from verse 1 and 2. Look unto Abraham your father, he says. Understudy Abraham. Verse 2 now. Look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that body. For I called him alone and blessed him and I increased him. That means study Abraham's life. What happened to Abraham when God called him? There was a conversation between Abraham and God. So we see speaking. But that was not the only thing that made him a benefactor of the promise. We see obedience. We see the endurance of patience. Is that true? The God of all grace perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, settle you. Let's define grace. What is the grace of God? Number one, I wrote here and I want you to listen carefully to this definition before you write. I said here that the grace of God is a state of consciousness. The grace of God is a disposition of understanding of the limitless provisions and the possibilities that are contained in God but only accessed through the office of the Christ. This is grace. The first definition of grace is that it is a disposition of understanding. It is a consciousness of the limitless provisions the vastness of God's power the vastness of God's blessings all that makes God God is called grace grace is like a warehouse that contains the entire riches of heaven the entire riches that are contained in God that warehouse the consciousness of the existence of such a possibility is grace Listen, none of us here is struggling to breathe in and out. Do you know why? It is not only because your nose can take in air and bring out air. It is because there is a consciousness in you that there is a limitless abundance. The moment you are aware that the air here is limited, we are going to have bitterness, we are going to have jealousy. Everybody will try to protect his portion of air. If you bring your nose near someone's, someone's circumference of air, the person says go away because there is an awareness of limitation there has to be an awareness in the saints of the vastness of the riches of Christ that the reason why God is lifting another is not why another is down that everybody can equally excel and rise and thrive and God still remains full are we together now if you have that understanding please listen you have to learn this if you have that understanding of the vast riches the grace of god a consciousness a disposition of understanding that when it has to do with the healing power of god is unlimited when it has to do with passion supplying passion just because god has given me a grace to love him he can give another person and another person and another person when you know this, the doctrine of superstar Christianity is unnecessary because the same Lord can be rich unto how many? In as much as there is the election of grace as we call it, but I'm telling you everyone can press into the fullness of the dimensions of Christ. All of us seated here can prosper all of us seated here can know God and love God with such passion. Every one of us here can be a custodian of a dimension of God's anointing. Every one of us can make advancement. And yet God is still saying who is left in as much as everyone has received. That our partaking of this does not deplete him. Please pay attention. It is because we understand the vastness of God's grace that we can give freely without withholding if you are not aware of this consciousness it will be difficult for you to give freely imagine if for every one naira or one dollar that goes out of your account ten naira comes will you be greedy confess but because you know that if I take ten naira it goes down. 100 naira, 
it goes down and say, no, I've tried. That's gone down. I, I, won't, I won't do that to myself. But imagine if there is a system that makes it to continue multiplying. This is, this is why God is a giver. He gives because there is no depletion in his economy. You have to understand this. This is the revelation of grace that you must have. The all-surpassing riches of Christ. The Bible calls it spiritual blessings. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But, now let me tell you this. There are many other kinds of spiritual blessings. But this one we are talking about. If it is the grace of God, you can never access it negating Christ. Jesus Christ is the only door that leads to receiving genuine grace. Are you seeing now? Because there are many people that try to route the grace of God and they take Jesus out of the equation. No. The Bible says every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. The office of the Christ is the only office by which men can access genuine grace that comes from God. It's called the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So anyone who truly desires that grace, you don't just reach for the grace ignoring Jesus. He is the door that leads to that grace. Are you seeing that now? Do you know why this is important? You'll be learning something I will share with you a bit, a bit after now. When people see the dexterity of this grace upon your life, chances are that they will bypass Jesus and yet want the grace. You have to be able to defend how this grace came. Because men will tell you, look, I don't love Jesus. I'm not interested in him. If he's wisdom, if he's this, pray for me. And you tell him, look, the administration of this grace demands that you must come through the door. The door means the authorized channel. If a, if a visitor follows the window and enters your house, he's in your house, but is he welcome? What do you call such a person? A thief. A thief is a visitor, but he's unwelcome and unneeded. If we do not understand the concept of grace accurately, many people will continue to boast in the flesh and Jesus will eventually be out of the picture. If it is genuine grace, you cannot take Jesus out of the picture. No, he remains at the epicenter of everything grace. Is God speaking to us? So the grace of God referred to the entire bank of God's riches and God's blessings. Salvation being the first but not the only. Salvation being the first but not the only. Let's attempt to list the rest. Mercy, deliverance, favor, speed. All these possibilities are captured in that bank called grace mercy is grace faith is grace deliverance is grace anointing is grace provided it came from god through christ to you the spiritual name is grace please do, do, do we have this understanding now yes so when we say it is the grace of god you are right how did you do this kind of thing? How did you build this? It is the grace of God. What you mean is that the possibilities that I'm enjoying came from this spiritual reservoir. It came through Christ to me. And now I am enjoying it. The grace of God. The second definition of grace, very quickly. The second definition of grace, which is equally useful for our teaching tonight, is the empowerment, the spiritual empowerment or enablement. Write it down, please. The spiritual empowerment or the enablement that results from this consciousness. What consciousness? The consciousness that God is infinitely limitless. The consciousness that everything I ever need for life and godliness is in Christ. 
when you have that consciousness that God is a giver and that this God and this kingdom that we so talk and boast about is a compendium of infinite possibilities. When you understand this, there is an empowerment that comes from that consciousness. The name of that empowerment and that enablement is called grace. Mm. So if I believe that in Christ, healing is possible, there is an empowerment that comes based on that consciousness. Are we together? If I believe that it is true, God prospers, there is an empowerment. The assignment of that empowerment is to bring you into the experience of what you have believed. Listen carefully. The assignment of that empowerment that we call grace, grace as an enablement, grace as help, grace as empowerment has the assignment to bring you into the experience of the things you have believed so if i believe that god is a lifter is it true from scripture yes has he lifted people from scripture yes by having that consciousness that god is a lifter the grace for lifting comes to my life in honor it comes to honor the fact that I believe that dimension of God. And let me tell you this. When that empowerment comes, because grace can teach, it begins to open me up to the participatory dynamics that make for lifting. So I find myself operating at a frequency of wisdom that mere human beings would not be able to have. The wisdom emanates from that empowerment. If I believe that God can make ordinary men powerful. I believe that because it is true from scripture. That grace, that anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon me and I'm able to prove it here and now with my life that God empowers people. So I can speak to someone and say by tomorrow, return lifted and the person just leaves believing that it was just a word that came on him. And by the next day, that word that came on him will start drawing destiny helpers, will start making him act in a certain way until prophecy comes to pass. It's called the enabling grace. Are we together now? If I pray for you and I say in the name of Jesus, the prophetic or apostolic or pastoral calling upon your life, let it be fan to flames. If you believe what I have said, the grace that empowers you will come on you. It is that grace that will start planting an appetite for prayer. Because in any case, without prayer, you will not grow. In any case, without word study, you will not grow. But the empowerment to do it does not come from you. The will to do it and the discipline to do it comes from you. But the empowerment to do six hours, three hours is not your strength. Are we learning? So, look up. It is true that the grace of God looks like you are not doing anything. But that is not entirely true. The grace of God grants you salvation so that you are in Christ. That becomes your legitimate ground for receiving every other thing. The moment the saving grace is administered to you, what is the assignment of the saving grace? It helps you believe the gospel. Without the saving grace at work in your life, you cannot believe the gospel. The saving grace helps you to, to believe the gospel. And then it is responsible for the impartation of Zoe, God's life. From that time onwards, the level of grace that is at work in you is called the enabling grace. The grace that empowers you. The energy is supernatural, but the doing is still you. So, I pick up my Bible by the Spirit of God and I begin to study. Ordinarily, I should not find anything. Ordinarily speaking, I should not see anything that culminates to revelation. Except that I'm not just reading it in the flesh. What does it mean to read in the flesh? By your efforts. Only engaging your sensory perceptions. Now whilst I'm reading, the Holy Ghost, you see that now. He comes and breathes upon me by that grace he has given me. And suddenly, I 
just turn to a scripture. I just feel like going online to type something and you find one scripture, then you see a 19 minute message or a 21 minute message. You had no business going there, but there was a grace. It was responding to your participatory. You see that now? You were participating with that grace. That 19 minute vi video leads you to a link, leads you to a website. Now you have found truth and you kneel down there crying. How did these people know that this is what I was looking for? Grace. God knows that the call upon your life will require stretching and mentorship and discipline. And so whilst you are praying and say, God, show me mercy. All of a sudden, you feel led to go to the market. But why should I go to the market after the rain? Whilst you are in that market, then you will see a poster. That poster leads you to a crusade that leads you to a church that leads you to the answer to your prayer. That is grace. It was grace moving you all the way. But you cooperated with that grace. That's why you are seeing the potential. You would have ignored it and the grace will still remain there. Listen, did you know in 2 Kings chapter 4, the oil had the ability to solve that woman's problem. But the oil could not multiply itself on its own. There was something she had to do to release the potential of that oil. What was her assignment? Increase the vessel. When she came to the prophet, the prophet said, you are a prophet's wife? No, this is not how God works. You are sure you are a prophet's wife? Yes, sir. My husband is late. He said, no, there must be something in your house. What do you have? Said nothing. He said, no. Check. I said, oh, oil. And the oil was listening to the conversation. And said, for years I have been here. You don't know what would have happened to your life. You never would have tasted of poverty if you had recognized that I am here waiting for your participation. As soon as the prophet gave her counsel, he said, I know where the problem is. You have been waiting for the oil to find its way to fill vessels. You go and borrow vessel. Don't borrow oil, but go and borrow vessel. Whatever it will take you, you can plead with your neighbor. Help me. Don't be ashamed. Go and outsource these things. And when she came, listen carefully. Listen. He said, now that you have it, shut your door and begin to pour. And the oil said, now that you have done your part, watch and see that this was no ordinary oil so god gives you your finances and in your dreams you're having visions of you thriving and yet you are going down because the grace has been waiting but there is no knowledge to know what to do with that grace you see that faith is not acting faith is acting based on the conditions tied to the promise there is always a condition. You don't choose what to do. You find out what you are supposed to do. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. The Bible says to observe and to do all his commandments which I command you this day. It says that the Lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Every time God speaks, the grace to make what he said come to pass starts hovering around the vicinity where that word was spoken. But the grace keeps waiting there. Who can believe that word and find out the condition that makes for the activation of that grace? Listen. When it was time for Jesus to come upon the earth, there was an engracing that came by the Holy Spirit waiting for that virgin, in this case Mary. If Mary refused and said, thank you for all this, your story, uh, Gabriel, go back to heaven and tell God I'm not stupid. He would have respected her will and the word alongside the grace would have looked for another person. But here's what Mary said. Be it unto me according to your word the moment that happened the grace called the power of the highest that overshadows how shall these things be she asks an honest question i'm willing to cooperate but 
Can a woman give birth without a man? And Gabriel said, leave the rest. Just understand. Your own part is, your own part is to agree. God is not a demon. He will not force a baby inside your womb. And she said, be it unto me. The same way, I hope you know that she had a responsibility of carrying that baby for nine months. And can I tell you honestly, I believe that she went through the normal things women go through when they are pregnant. Don't you think she was smiling every day carrying a heavy Jesus? No. There were times she felt this Jesus. I, they told me you are the king of kings. You are inside my stomach. I am tired. But her will kept playing the role. When it was time she would have refused and said you are not coming out. You will know now that you are inside my stomach. She had to cooperate. Now, are, are, we, are we together now? Yes. Why didn't Jesus just jump out one morning and say thank you. I was only waiting to be nine months. He had to subscribe to the process of delivery when she gave birth. Why am I teaching you this? Please place value on what I'm teaching you. By the privilege of God's grace, this man standing before you, I'm not in ignorance over what I'm saying. I understand this thing. Many believers continue to live defeated lives in this kingdom. Because they do not understand the character of this enabling grace. The effort, the empowerment does not come from you. But the action of obedience comes from you. And until that action is taken, the grace remains futile. So God speaks to you and tells you you are going to be a CEO. You will build a foundation that will go around the globe. The moment you believe him, listen carefully. The grace starts hanging around your vicinity. But it doesn't mean anything is built. You will keep seeing visions till you get old. If you remain like that. The day you now say, listen. The day you now say, I believe. Let me start making efforts. Let me go and buy a book on building a business. You are now cooperating with that grace. A book that ordinarily you shouldn't have understood. He will empower your mind. And you will start understanding and whilst you are reading you will find a phone number you will come for koinonia like this and that grace will shift you to sit down near somebody who has a foundation and then you will see something written so 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 foundation and you say wow this is amazing you run a foundation you say i've been running this for 26 years and the holy spirit will say you see now that is the person i wanted you to come to meet now you partner with that person watch grace at work and the person says okay i will call someone in uk to help you a connection is coming it is not your wisdom that's why at the end of it when you stand in front of that edifice if they ask you how did it happen you will say grace because the dynamics but i'm telling you if you sat down at home there you will be very surprised that that grace will not work Look at me. There are many, many people who have not taken advantage of this grace. There are many men and women of God who want to rise to positions of influence. They want to be great. They want to carry power. But they just say, in Jesus' name, I won't be small. And they are surprised that they remain small. As if God did not hear them. Let me tell you what the problem is. Here is the problem. You do not understand that this grace is activated through knowledge that leads to obedience and it is at the point of your obedience that the potential of that grace is released. It is at the point of obedience. Listen to me. Faith is not saying what God has said. Faith is doing what God has said. You can start by saying homologio confession repeat as you have heard but it should not stop there so come Dave God tells this man I want to lift you as a worshiper and take you to the nations of the earth whether it comes by prophecy or it comes by a scripture that is found 
He can decide to say, God, you have given me a word. I'm going to the nations. And he will sit down there. The day he goes to get a guitar or a keyboard, he is now participating with that grace. Are you seeing now? You go to the market as you are saving. Heaven is watching you. He buys a guitar, whether he can play it or not. Buys a keyboard. And the moment you do that, you have shown God that you are interested. He will now lead you to the person who will teach you. You see, you see him walking with you. I believe that God has called me to serve his purposes in the capacity that I serve. And I thank God for it. But sitting down to fold my arms and say the grace of God is at work in my life, I will be surprised till tomorrow. Let me show you a scripture. <sighs> Grant us grace, O oh Lord. Grant us grace. Grant us wisdom. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. I want us to read it as loud as we can when we see it. 1 Corinthians 15, media help us, verse 10. Everyone, please read if you are a child of God and you believe in Jesus. Ready? One to read. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Stop. 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 How do we become in this kingdom? By the grace of God. For by the grace of God, I am this politician that I am. For by the grace of God, I am this man of God that I am. By the grace of God, I am this CEO, this billionaire. By the grace of God, I am this that I am. But here is this. He says, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Stop. Hmm. So we're, we're examining three things now. The first is that the summary is that it is grace. But hey, so that you don't carry this confusion, hold on. Let me explain to you. That grace can be wasted. Let me show you how to waste it. To sit down and fold your arms, believing that everything is all right. It's called making the grace of God. Please keep the scripture there in vain. How did I maximize that grace? Next expression. Everyone read. One to read. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Stop. Don't rush. Don't rush. So number one, I am what I am by the grace of God. Number two, the grace came upon me, but the grace did not meet ignorance. The grace met me laboring. The labor dimension of faith. The grace met me looking around for a shop. The grace met me learning how to start the business. The grace came upon me and I did not sit down. You are going to start a school. The grace met me going around Abuja and understudying schools as proof that I believe what God said. God told me I will become a grace man of God. The grace met you going to men of God who represent your future and listening and learning. He says, I labored more than you all. The higher the tenacity of your participatory corporation, the higher the grace walks and speaks in your life. Grace is not a license for laziness. Hear me, believers. Grace is not a license for laziness. Grace is a system of advantage that we labor circumspectly because we are empowered by the Spirit. It takes effort to pray. It takes effort to study the Word. It takes the audacity of faith to remain in the presence of failure and continue because God said so. The Bible says when you find yourself participating that way then grace can speak for you are we together grace it says yet not I but the grace of God that means it was not by my energy in as much as you found me 
as Paul praying in as much as you found me studying in as much as you found me preaching the gospel regardless the persecution there was an energizing within me that was more than me brothers and sisters please hear me I beg you and I beseech you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God to understand what I'm teaching you otherwise your Christian experience will be so frustrated Apostle, ah, God has shown you grace. You are right. But please explain to me what you mean. If you mean that I sat down quietly, grace does not work like that. The grace that saves is loitering around here. But there are people, if you die now without Jesus, you are going straight to hell. Bishop David Oyedepo will say, any Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. There must always be something. Now, let me tell you what it means to walk in the flesh. To walk in the flesh means to depend on your effort. To walk in the flesh means to believe that it is absolutely because of what you have done. You do not need God. It is because of my human connection, my wisdom. It is because of this. Uh -uh. The compassion of the Father was at the mercy of the sacrifice of Jesus. If Jesus did not endure, listen to me. When the nails hit the hand of Jesus, he didn't keep quiet and say, finish it, let me die. I'm the Savior. He felt the pain. Let me show you how. And met the sacrifice of his son. That's what produced grace. Love and a participatory effort. There are many of us looking at me. The grace of God keeps hovering around you, bringing open doors that an inaccurate spiritual understanding continues to close. Let me tell you what many of us are doing. This illusion that we have, one day go better, is a slang that we use in Nigerian parts of Africa to mean one day arbitrarily, without any effort or contribution on your own part, things will change. It's a joke, joke multiplied. God has called me to be a visionary politician. Obtain grace from God and sit in your office in the night. Begin to strategize how to rise to that position. As you are strategizing, the Spirit of God is seeing your diligence and the engracing of God is coming to empower you. Hear me? Some of you need to politely go back home and call your family and say, I now find out why we keep praying and doors keep closing because there is something to do to rise there are people who god will speak to and say tomorrow you'll be a director of an institute there but the director requires you have at least a master's or a phd or become a professor if you obtain grace and go to school you are participating with that grace to rise to that position of influence. It will not come and meet you at that state because that industry requires that degree of qualification. So training, diligence, studies, knowledge are all our participatory efforts to make good the grace of God. Let me submit to you, and I say this sincerely by the God of my salvation, every night, including today as tired as i am when i just returned from lagos you know that i've been to abel kota from abel kota the men's conference four square to lagos and back straight here and after this there will be people to see and after all it doesn't matter what time as a principle and as a discipline i must listen to this message this night myself before i sleep don't covet people's crowns until you find out the sacrifice that those crowns are standing on. Oh, you are just lucky. It's just God's grace. Business people, hear me. This may be the Holy Spirit speaking to you. I know I will prosper. Oil and gas. I know I will prosper banking God showed me you are right but believe me 
remaining at that state will only frustrate you and bring reproach to your life these signs shall follow them follow means you are moving follow means you are taking steps the grace of God to empower Esther to receive favor was there but if Esther sat down she would not find favor with the king she said you know what I need to see this king my people are about to die I believe I'm favored so I'm going to see him if I perish, I perish. listen now I'm not encouraging you to be a hustler that thing we call hustle blindly trying to make things work don't do that but have you noticed that people who don't give up never end up in shame for some reason have you seen people like that they may not even be very serious believers as soon as one door closes they have no time to mourn they force another one to open they are losing their job they grieve for two hours and they are up with their CV again They have an e version, they have their bag with the, 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 the CV. Any version you want, they are prepared. There are people like that. Are you into real estate? They will say yes. In two nights, they will read about real estate more than people who have been in it in 10 years because they will not let that opportunity go. Sooner or later, my brothers and sisters, you will be surprised to find out that something will work. I'm not just marketing flesh. I'm teaching you how the grace of God works. Hear me. There are many of you for a long time, God has shown you that there are mantles, there are anointings. You've had dreams, you've had visions. Let me see what you are doing as proof that you believe what God showed you. For many of us, this is what we are doing. We are folding our arms. Oh, one day the fathers will die and it will be our turn. What sort of thinking is that? Oh, I know, don't laugh at me. I know one day I will rise. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I know God will prosper me. Show me the books you bought in honor of that word. Show me the uncommon mentors you are pursuing in the area of finances with proven results as proof that you believe you are a kingdom financier. Found out, respectfully speaking, that if the body of Christ does not learn the labor dimension of faith, we will continue to mock ourselves, jumping at confessions that will indefinitely remain in the realm of the spirit. Not inaccurate, but that lack of balance and completion is where our frustrations lie. Joshua, there is a grace for victory upon you, but it will not be without any effort from you. You are going to go around. You don't have the power to fight, but there must be a token of contribution from you. Get the priests. Go round. I will sing unto the Lord. For he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. They won. It's like going around Abuja, I told you. Don't think it was just a small room. They went round. Going around Jericho was hard work. They did it for seven days. And he said, now, on the last day that you want to see the biggest blessings, you will do what you have done every day on that day alone, seven times. Now, man, I release a grace upon you for wellness. But go and look for a river. Dirty. Bath there. Naaman was saying, what sort of thing? You are insulting my pedigree. Say, okay, you can remain with your leprosy. But if it is God you want to see cure you, go and bath. Naaman dipped himself once, came out looking like a child playing in mud. He was not healed. Dipped himself again, came out the second time. Even the sixth time, nothing happened. But when he went the seventh time, that grace in the water there. And as soon as he came out, the Bible says his skin was like that of a child. What of blind Bartimaeus? What of the man at gate beautiful? Acts chapter 3, I believe. The Bible says it was the hour of prayer. Listen very carefully. The man was begging for arms. Peter and John went to pray. 
and then when they saw him what do you want i want arms silver and gold he said i have none but such as i have there is a grace he gave us i give unto you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk the man remained on the ground there don't think he just jumped up no he remained on the ground there verse 7 hear what peter said for as long as you are remaining there this grace would not work let me help you hold my hands and he moved him the bible says and as he lifted him immediately his feet and his ankle bone received strength not when he was sitting at the instance of his participatory role that grace came upon him brothers and sisters please hear me it will never happen sitting down rest does not mean lack of efforts rest means dependence on God God's idea of rest does not mean leaving anything and sitting down there no rest means that your dependence the energizing and the empowerment remember when there were few automatic cars cars that use automatic gear you have to put the manual gear remember from four you come back to three to two one and then four three two one and your hand is almost as if it's removing but now you have an automatic gear system but who holds the steering there is a system that keeps changing gears but you leave the steering and hold your hand and close your eyes and almost immediately you end your life but by holding on to the steering listen to me the advantage of the automatic gear system is to give you more room to focus and to provide convenience so people can drive while they are talking and they are just driving while they are talking it would not be it would not be possible with the manual system just like that this is how grace works grace does not drive the car for you it helps you to engage the gear system so that whilst you hold it and it also empowers you and gives you the strength my brothers and my sisters obtain grace from God today find out what you need to do about your destiny rise up knowing that I have the backing of heaven open fire towards your destiny and in one month you will do more than you have done in 10 years put together then you will come and stand here and when we say how did it happen you will say the grace of God and we will know what you are saying Apostle, I want to be anointed. God who anoints me, I know, is my God. You are right. But that's not how it works. There are keys to the anointing. When you sit down and you are learning and you are studying while others are sleeping, you are maximizing grace. When you are listening to uncommon mentors help you and show you the way it works, you are maximizing grace. Every participatory effort that you put, knowing that I'm not putting this effort in the flesh, I am maximizing grace this is why there are certain people who continue to triumph from one level of victory to the other whereas there are many spectators who sit down and hope that things will happen the grace of God an enabler a divine help if I think I engage my mind but I don't have the power to give myself ideas the grace can bring ideas while my mind like a womb receives them and births them so if you ask me how did the idea come i will say the grace of god but the idea came and manifested because my mind was fruitful to it when god sent me to this city by the grace of god and with every sense of humility i knew that his grace and his name was there to back me but if i sat down and i folded my arms and i know it's, i one day it will happen don't worry you will be blessed tomorrow would come and even next tomorrow and nothing would ever happen but that effort in faith from one step to another step to another step 
His grace leading you. His grace guiding you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your ways. For step by step you lead me. And I will follow you all of my days. Apostle, I don't know why I have favor, but people run away from me. You are right. You have been wasting that grace because you have not studied about relationships. The grace comes upon you, but your ignorance as to know how to relate with the world of men keeps aborting and destroying that grace. The day you submit yourself to learning how to live in the world of men, you take advantage of that grace. Now you are ready to excel. Now you are ready to excel. A gentleman years ago will soon pray. He heard my teaching. I did a teaching on finances. And when he listened to it, he had a little fashion outfit just to sew. And when he listened, he was full of incompetence and was just giving all kinds of excuses. He will measure you and sew clothes that twice your neck will enter inside. It, carelessness. And it didn't matter to him. And when he listened, and in, in it I spoke about diligence, he made up his mind. He submitted himself for one year to learning and mastery. Receiving the blessings that came from God's servant week in, week out. At the end of it, listen very carefully. At the end of it, that gentleman grew to a level of competence. He now, his goal and his prayer was that one day he would also include me among his clients that he would be sowing for. And he believed that he was called to do it, but not that version of him. And he worked on himself for one year and he sowed something then in Zaria. He carried it and brought it. Many people used to sow and bring clothes as seeds. And for some reason, I was restless early in the morning i said let me check out what this guy did i'm so I said, i'm sure all these people who have sown a lot of things god bless them but i may not be able to use it but when i saw his finishing i saw what he did i asked the protocol i said look for this guy let him see me before he leaves <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that was the beginning of open doors for that gentleman the rest is history history that is worth knowing but it is history Oh, David, it is true that one day you will kill Goliath. But if all you do is sit down in the bush staring at animals, Goliath will kill you as if God did not call you. Are we together? Yes, sir. When David was killing the bear, when David was killing the lion, the grace for leadership was supervising him, watching him. And when the moment came, he came and stood before Goliath and he said, I've rehearsed well. Goliath said, am I a dog? He said, Goliath, be careful. You don't know what I've been doing preparing for this day. I am what I am by the grace of God. But the grace, I did not waste it in that I labored. I labored. In prayer, I labored in diligence. Nigerians, let's return to a point where we find dignity in labor and let's see it as part of faith as an as a participatory role to obtain and maximize grace arbitrarily leaving things to just walk like that 
arbitrarily waiting that one day we'll become exceptional politicians with no effort on our part exceptional businessmen doing business with nations exceptional men of God mentoring kings and speaking to nations just because God called you I apologize but that may never happen this is not how the kingdom works therefore you must obtain grace tonight to go back and say Lord what have you told me and what participatory role do I have to play in diligence while you are crying you still believe I'm a career of that grace and it's working for me God has called you into the music ministry sit down and pray in tongues until songs start coming from heaven when they come write them you are maximizing grace the first song you will sing it and like it alone don't be discouraged keep writing are we together you believe God has called you into business you will go full of grace and be surprised that you will fail woefully don't worry there is a difference between failure as a person and failure as an event give God glory for the lesson you are learning now because it will give you the audacity to mentor others tomorrow so continue learning and going and whilst you take that step from one connection to another connection to one sermon, to one program, to one destiny helper, to one revelation, to one impartation, you find out that your life now begins to make sense. Something is adding up. Something is adding up. I desired certain levels of the anointing in my life. I saw in dreams and visions that I was walking in it. It would be a joke those days. To just gather people and say, I wanted people for, on wheelchairs and crutches. Ah, no. But I knew. And I said, just sitting down to say, God, one day you will bless me. Uh -uh. I started looking for healing evangelists around the world. Dead and alive. I began to study their convictions and their contemplations. What did God tell them? And let me tell you this. By the privilege of God's grace... We who God has helped to be successful a bit and we are still growing in the area of success. Let's be sincere when we mentor people. Don't just arbitrarily tell them is the grace of God like that. When it has to do with mentorship, open them to your scars. Let them know the dynamics, the way you participated with that grace to make it happen. Tell them you prayed for 10 hours. Not as an effort on your own but that you were taking advantage of the grace. Tell them you fasted. Tell them there were times you were disappointed in meetings. Be open with them. Tell them you forgot your message one day. And that was when you knew that the spirit of revelation was real. Be sincere with them. For as long as we keep blaming people for our lives, including God, God, you are there. You are watching my life. You are watching my family. God is saying my love and my kindness is not in doubt. I have given you everything. He that did not spare his son. I didn't spare Jesus. Will I withhold anything from you? You are aborting, misusing, and abusing the grace of God. I keep enabling you and you do not act in keeping with the conditions that are required by scripture to make that grace come to pass. So from tonight, make up your mind that my life must command results. Make up your mind. It is not all up to God and it is not all up to you. Let me round up by saying this and then we pray. When the prodigal son left his father and went around, he was roaming around with pigs. Eating from pigs. Here's what he said. I will arise. What did he want? He wanted to enjoy that grace again. That opportunity. It was a house with limitless abundance. But he left it and he began to deplete. He said I will arise. I don't have the power to restore myself. But I have the power to meet my father. I can make efforts to meet my father. And as he was making that decision concurrently. 
his father said, let me meet my son. Let me keep going. Paradventure, I will meet my son somewhere. There was a meeting point. He did not meet him at his place of rest and he did not meet him in the house. He met him at the place of obedience. It's a risk I'm taking. What if my father throws me away? It's a risk I'm taking. And while I'm going, I'm rehearsing what I will tell him. Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of the slaves, but at least let me make the efforts. I am going. If he drives me away, I will return back with honor. I will say, God, at least you've seen that I've made efforts. When the father saw him, the first thing the father did was to embrace him and said, your obedience has spoken volumes. You don't need to tell me more. I already know the story. The fact that you understood and discerned enough to leave that point, not minding the shame, people look at him and say, this guy whose father was wealthy, what a useless boy, enduring the ridicule to keep moving was already enough. And um, the moment the father met him, the Bible says he put back that ring, that symbol of honor, sent him to the house, held a party for him. And while that was happening, the elder brother was now angry. And the elder brother said, so what about me? I have been in this house. And he said, you want to make the mistake of this person now? Everything I have is yours. It's just that you don't know what to do. All you needed to do was to ask me as your father. You do not have the consciousness of my fatherhood to request that I will give you a lamb. Will I not honor you for your obedience and your staying? There is nothing that God cannot do but fold in your arms to say, Lord, I know. There is nothing you can not do. It's true. But I'm showing you the dynamics of the administration of grace. Let's read that scripture again. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. We're wrapping up. 15, 10. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Please help us, media. But by the grace of God, Joshua Selman, you are what you are. Everything you will ever be is a product of God's grace. You are right, but don't stop there. Paul did not stop there. He says, and his grace, which was given to me, already given, was not in vain. I participated with that grace in that I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship, the communion of the Holy Spirit. It will only be with you if you are interested. It will only remain with you if you are ready to receive it. Anything God says you should receive, you can reject it. It does not end up in just confession. It does not end up in waiting for God to do. You have engraced me. Empower me, therefore, to take not steps that I want, steps that are required as demanded by the result I intend to see. Please rise up on yours. Your grace your grace I'm nothing without you your grace your grace shines on me shines on me shines on me I'm everything with you Shines on me, shines on me, it's your grace. Listen, whilst you're standing, I want you to begin to see with the eyes of your spirit the next level of your Christian experience, the next level of your business, 
the next level of your family the next level of your finances see it because in Christ is a possibility see it because in Christ you have access your assignment is to turn access into experience your assignment is to partner with the grace of God through the ministry of the Holy Spirit to make access become experience you may have a billion dollars in your card but if you do not know how to re to use your ATM card or make withdrawals you can sit down and be dying of hunger and thirst whereas you have so much this is how it is in the kingdom I want you to see with the eyes of your spirit you are in ministry I would like you to see how limitless you can be in Christ not for the sake of gratifying the flesh that you can do so much for his majesty you are in business you are a politician I like you to see yourself becoming what God has said there is no limit I'm telling you to what you can be I believe God I believe you I believe you I believe you the abundance of your grace hallelujah 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 this is my philosophy I walk with the consciousness that there is space for me in destiny there is no devil in existence from any nation and any region that will edge you out of your space in destiny but just knowing it is there does not take you there it was Sir Isaac Newton that stated his laws of motion in his study on mechanics and he stated one of the laws he said everybody remains in a state of uniform motion or rest it will remain there except compelled by an external force to act otherwise he was so right he was so right nothing changes if action and effort is not put your business will remain at the last level of your obedience your company will remain at the last level of your diligence. Your mind will remain at the last level of your study. The anointing upon your life will remain at the last level of your press and sacrifice. Your prayer life will remain at the last level of your exercising your senses spiritually. Please hear me. Even if you are Esther, while you wait for Ahasuerus, use the oil don't sit back there Esther was not sitting every day the oil was coming upon her you may not have the money to start the company but go online and buy the books listen to teachings by people with results provable results you are trusting God for ministry ministry is grounded for you it is not growing you are a sincere person but nobody is placing a demand on the grace of God upon your life stop giving flimsy excuses around it is not tribe it is not region it's not where your church is located no where the carcasses are there the eagles will gather stop giving excuses it's because I am this that's why I'm not promoted I'm lifted in office take responsibility Lord there is something I have not done with the grace you gave me remember the wife of the son of the prophets that oil has been in your house for a long time the oil kept speaking since last year will you leave me like this businessman do you know what I can do do you know what the grace of God can do man of God do you know what the grace of God can do prophet apostle do you know what the grace of God can do The injection contains in it a liquid that goes into your system and corrects what is wrong but the injection will not bring itself into your system the doctor calls you designed in that liquid 
is the entire the, the injection has already been programmed to work in your body but are you willing to endure the pain there are injections that are painful and yet that's the price for the healing you are looking for so you compare the one minute pain to the years of misery and you can stand and say doctor I am willing and he gives you the pain you may feel the pain but you are not conscious of that injection you are conscious of what happens to you and as soon as it is administered two days three days you're running around like you were never sick or you can refuse and remain there and say I want drugs but the drugs are given to you you will have to go through the discipline of swallowing it per time required and whilst you are swallowing it complaining but you are still acting the body does not care that you are complaining just keep doing what brings health and the body will be healthy can I tell you this brothers and sisters I do not promise you the grace of God and faith in God does not necessarily make all things easy it makes them possible I'm not going to promise you that just because the grace of God is upon your life you may not need to cry I'll be lying to you there are some of you the journey you are beginning from tonight it will be a journey of tears but while you cry don't stop while you weep don't stop was it not because they wanted to go to the other side help them please we're praying just help those under the anointing it says where we meet with you is too small let us go beyond the Jordan it was their instinct for increase that brought that guy in trouble I innocently wanted to fell a tree to build a bigger place alas master it was borrowed he said fine rest there is a grace for restoration but you have an effort point to me where it fell I'm not just going to bring it out just point it and he said well I may not have the power to make it float but prophet I can show you where it is and he threw a stick and he began to float are you ready to pray in one minute I like you to pray from the depth of your heart Lord the grace to begin to take radical actions of obedience towards my destiny radical actions of obedience as proof that I believe your grace and as proof that I am maximizing that grace. Please go ahead and pray. Radical actions of obedience. Obedience in study. Obedience in mentorship. Obedience in prayer. Obedience in speaking. Finding out the conditions that my results depend on and working in keeping with those conditions. Please pray. There is a grace for speed. There is a grace for performance. There is a grace for influence and visibility. There is a grace for signs and wonders. There is a grace for leadership. There is a grace for wealth and abundance. Believe me. There is a grace for favor. These graces are available. But even if they come upon your life, they don't produce results automatically. They enable you to do. They enable you to act. They enable you to act. They empower you. Please pray. Hallelujah. Last prayer point tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Mighty God, someone's life is changing. 2 Corinthians, help us medium. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Please read with me, believers. 1, 2, read. And God 
is able to make stop God has an ability he can coordinate the grace for favor join it with the grace for wisdom join it with the grace for speed the grace for restoration bringing grace is not your assignment God is able to make all grace abound towards you and now when you partner with that grace through diligence and obedience you will always having all sufficiency in how many things by these results you will abound to every good work god supplies the grace you take advantage of the grace through faith and now that grace empowers you empowers your mind your body your spirit your will and pushes you to walk in keeping with the conditions that make for the promise the condition that makes for the results that you seek and inevitably the bible says if you live like this you say are you ready to pray father every grace that i need in this season every dimension of grace and if you know a particular dimension of grace that you are seeking passionately lift your voice and pray the bible says it comes from god god is able to make all grace abound towards you the grace for prosperity the grace for passion and hunger for the things of god the grace for prayer and supplication the grace for revelation the grace for influence the grace for signs and wonders the grace for favor attracting to your life helpers of destiny all of these graces are for your taking but you must pray that god sends them and pray that you will maximize them lord i will not waste your grace through ignorance i will not waste your grace through idleness i will not waste your grace through carelessness i release my faith and i take advantage of that grace hallelujah praise the name of the lord before i speak over your life for tonight i want to invite very quickly i've i've preached about grace there are people here scattered within this auditorium please no movement let's respect the altar call those outside all the overflows down to the basement and there are people following from nations continents territories you have heard the word the grace that saves right now is within reach but it will only profit you if you are able to take that step and stand as one who is in need of that grace the bible says whosoever comes to him he will in no wise cast away i'm going to make an altar call for two groups of people very quickly number one those who are saying apostle i've given up I'm, I'm tired of living my life my own way. I want Jesus. I need him desperately. And number two, there are those who are saying, I want restoration. I want to rededicate my life. If you are here, I'm going to count one to three because of our time. Please boldly, unashamedly, I'd like you to leave your seat and come and stand here. Remember that the grace is only activated when we take those steps of faith. An instruction has been given by the Spirit. Celebrate them as they come. I begin to count now. One. Two. Come to Jesus. The saving grace is working in your life. No matter how far you have gone, he can give you a new beginning. Come. Come to Jesus. Koinonia, celebrate them as they come. This is the grace of God. This is what the grace of God can do when we participate with that grace. All those at the overflows, just move to your projector screens. Following online, be ready to make that prayer. Are you still clapping? Watch what the grace of God can do. For as long as they are seated, it will look like grace is not working. But when you begin to take action, then you see the grace work.
And I'm forever grateful that you have been faithful to me, God, for your amazing grace. I salute every one of you, my dear brothers and sisters, for making this noble decision. Just like I thought, you have partnered with God's grace. Now you have done your own part by coming. There's only one more step left. The prayer of salvation to repeat after me. Then the giver of grace will bring you away his life. And that life becomes yours at the instance of your faith demonstrated in and through your coming and your confession. Some of you are crying. Don't be afraid and don't be ashamed. This is a family of faith. We are recipients of God's grace. Are you ready to pray? Please lift your right hand before Jesus whose office grace is administered. In this kingdom, we never partake of grace outside of the office of the Christ. He is the epicenter of grace. I once was lost but now I'm found. I was blind but now Everyone here in front of me and those at the overflows, the basement, outside, following online, please repeat after me very loud and let it be from the depth of your heart, knowing that Jesus is here and he's listening to you. The grace that saves has brought you and is ready to administer salvation. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I believe in your word. I believe in your grace tonight I have heard that your grace can save so I come to you just as I am I ask you to forgive my sins I ask you tonight to be my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that I am a recipient of eternal life. I declare that I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. I declare that my sins are forgiven. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken from my life. From today, I go forward ever and backward never. Amen and hallelujah. Keep your hands lifted. Father, the Bible declares that whoever will come to him, you will in no wise cast away. These ones have come. I pray by the authority of scripture, I declare that your sins are forgiven. From today, even by the authority of scripture, it says, therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have gone. Behold, all things become new. I declare that you start afresh with the Lord from today. I declare that the power of Satan, sin, hell, and the grave is broken from your life. You are members of the fold of faith, blood washed, recipients of eternal life i commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit that in the name of jesus by the twofold ministry of the word and the spirit you will grow in grace in the name of jesus christ from tonight you are victorious you go forward ever and backward never in jesus name i pray amen and amen Thank you and a big congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Now, I want you to follow the counselors. They are waving their hands and waving.